as you might know, Enscape just released the 4.0 version, which is like a big deal. And there's some really cool features that I wanted to share with you and giving you also my insights of what I perceive as being really revolutionary and maybe more basic in general. So make sure to stay tuned till the end because the end is what I would say is the most breakthrough kind of like offers that they have. We'll be going through all of the new lighting features they offer, what they have available for, what improvements they've actually offered in regards to Mac users, Rhino users, and Revit users. So let's get started. So what they've done first is that they've actually updated their UI. So UI means user interface. If you look at the toolbars, whether it's in your SketchUp window or, for example, in your Enscape window, the icons have changed, the design of the icons have changed, and also the color goes from orange to a dark blue. The reason for that is that they perceive that as adding a better readability and understanding of the icons in a first instance, which personally I do feel helps as well. It um, just allows the eye to focus more on the actual render rather than on these like kind of fluorescent orange icons that we had previously. Now this feature is related to Rhino users. So now Enscape supports Rhino 8.3 and upwards. Uh, which means that you can actually integrate Enscape into your workflow when using Rhino. That means that you can introduce real-time visualization directly into your design workflow, which is quite a big step. So honestly, for Rhino users, this is actually amazing. The feature that they've introduced is related to VR headset support. Enscape is now adding support for head-mounted displays that are compatible with uh, MetaQuest 3 and also with the HTC Vive Pro 2. You will now enjoy a faster loading speed of your renders and also the image would be much more crisp. Another big feature is related this time to Revit users. Now, Revit, so Enscape's been already integrated in Revit. I don't know if you noticed, but when you, you worked in a collaborative way, uh, sharing so your models with different colleagues, for example, there were quite a few bugs um, related to these collaborative sessions, mainly when it came to modifying views, uh, visual settings, uh, presets, and site context. So this has been improved, which is great news. Another add-on based on this new Enscape 4.0 is that they've added over 178 new assets of new animated vegetations assets. So this can go from like um, trees, bushes, uh, flowers. They've kind of tried to represent the vegetation, which is available um, specifically, for example, in Mexico, in more northern climates, um, or even desert regions. So, for example, if you go through the asset library here, like this is new, I've never seen this one before. Um, you can feel that like the Mexican kind of vibe here. Um, there's probably a large selection as well of like, oh, cactus, you see here, this is quite new. Again, if you recall, uh, you can see here, when there's one image, one on one, uh, one by one means that it's, it's a single image. However, if it's, there's like one by two or one by three, if you click on the image, they actually have different variants. So if you look here, this is like a standard cactus. Well, if I click on the second image, uh, this one tends to have some kind of like little flowers. So you can really kind of go scroll through all the um, Enscape ISET library to really discover all of the new features they have. They've also added 32 new people in their asset library with different poses, different outfits. So again, you can really kind of create um, an emotional kind of like look and feel in your renders um, based on the type of profile, uh, pose and just clothing style that you want to represent. So for example, this guy is definitely new. I've never seen him before. Uh, so adult man with a laser scanner device on his shoulders. So yeah, definitely new. You can really have fun here. Just like scroll through all the options they have. And just as a little reminder, you can also, if you you don't want to scroll through the large choice, so there's over 800 people right now, you can 
you can choose depending on the profile that you're looking for. Are you looking for like hospital environment, um, a male, someone sitting, standing? So you really can just kind of like narrow down your choice quite easily. Before we continue, I just want to encourage you to subscribe, to like, or to even comment. Give me all of your feedback and your thoughts about these new features in the links below. That would help me a lot in growing my channel. Next up is what we call the denoiser for capture exports. This denoiser solution is actually a significant improvement in terms of the quality of your image. So this will really kind of elevate the realism of your Enscape final outcome. So your final render. These de denoisers effects are particularly visible when you're like in more closed spaces with very low direct lighting even more when it's reflected on glossy or metallic surfaces. So here you can see quite visibly the difference in terms of this is when the denoiser is off. You can see here how the light uh, reflected and the surface is a bit more fuzzy and blurry and less sharp, I would say. And if you look when the denoiser is on, um, you can really see you have like very nice, sharp, clear, details that are captured throughout the image and these can be captured using like image exports uh, mono or stereo panoramas videos or even vr that you will be really able to see the the impact of the denoiser solution Another very cool feature that they've introduced is the ray traced artificial light. Now, just to be careful, this has been introduced only for Windows users and not on Mac yet. I don't know if you noticed, but previously, when you would have light sources that were too close to each other, it would create irregular edges and missing shadows, which now with this new ray traced artificial light, um, that they've introduced, um, this will not be the case anymore. Regarding shadows, to just have the most crisp and accurate shadow, and this results in like a really nice kind of sharp variations of light. So if, for example, you have a scene which is illuminated with large light sources, you can now actually get really soft shadows, like you can see right here. Um, and just it kind of allows you to have a more accurate representation of the light's behavior uh, that we would see in real life. And last but not least, which for me really seems on top of the lighting that I shared with you earlier, but this is for me like the biggest kind of like milestone improvement that Enscape has done up to date, is that finally Mac is up to date in terms of the features available compared to Windows. As you know, Mac users um, have always had a delay in terms of features that Enscape was offering. Uh, it always came like weeks, potentially months later, and now it is finally up to date. So whatever you have available currently in Windows is also available in Mac. So just to summarize, what are the features that they've added up to now? You can adjust assets. You can use dynamic asset placements. So this is really useful for outdoor renders. You can integrate custom library assets, which wasn't the case up to now. You can incorporate as well your model into a site context. What does that mean? It means that pretty much you um, enter, it's a bit kind of like a Google Maps where you enter the address or the location of where your, your house, for example, that you're rendering is located and you can actually incorporate the surroundings of this existing house, all of the BIM data, and finally, all of the collaborative annotations. So this really now give it, gives like a full user experiences to Mac users of Enscape, and you can really just make the most out of it, which is really great news.